Salmon. So, 24 Jonathan, hours in the Mara. Jonathan Scott, <laughs> the big cat man. Man, this, okay, is, a, this I wanna, is incredible. You know, Rick, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say this. When people ask me, what would you do if you had one day left in your life? I say, I would spend it in the Mara with my wife, Angie, also a wildlife photographer, because I know it's the best place in the world to get great action. You know, I would have to agree with Jonathan. I mean, I've been here 24 hours. We'd hit the ground running. And Susan, who's shoot, shooting right now, knows yep. I'm a little hyper and I break the speed <laughs> I can of feel light. it. Don't worry. You're okay. <laughs> so, so the thing is this. I put together this slideshow, 24 hours on the Mara, and I'd love to share it with you and get your opinion. Does okay? it prove my point? It proves your point. <laughs> and not only that, you know, I'm a photographer, so I don't really, I know a little bit about animal behavior, but you're the expert on this. Yeah, but I've got to give you, you you've got a great start. Canon cameras. That tw that 200 to 400 millimeter lens with the, <laughs> this is amazing. But I'm also using this, the uh, 70 to 300. The 70 to this 300 lens, Angie loves. Yeah. Because it's lighter than the 70 to 200 right. 28, which I love. Mm -hmm. It's great for people and for wildlife. And when you actually find yourself too close, this is the lens. That's great. Yeah. And I'm also I have my wide angle lenses in there, my 17 to 40 yep. and my 24 to 105. Yep. Because actually what I'm trying to do with this uh, slideshow is to tell the story of sure. these 24 hours. Yeah. You want to tell me why the Mara is the best place in the world and Kenya <laughs> is the ultimate safari destination. I, I've been to a lot of places. This is, this is again, 24 hours. Fantastic. Let's see believe. some pictures. Well, okay. look at this. Start so, up. Three cubs. Well, the thing about this, in the slideshow, these are the order in which I took the picture. Okay. So we, we land here and we go out. It's late afternoon and we see these three cubs. So about how old are these cubs? They are, I'd say about five months, that about kind of age. Months? Yeah, four or five months. Should I tell you something? People sure. always think when they see cubs that they are older than they actually are. Really? You know, yeah. Or, beg your pardon. People, when they see cubs, they always tend to think they're younger than they younger, are. Younger, But wow. if you've seen a newborn lion cub, it's the size of a rat. Its eyes are closed. It can barely crawl. Wow. So, yeah, four months. Let's say that. Let's, let, let's take it easy. But, of course, the other great thing is we signed you up with Simon Sitiani here at Governor's Camp. I mean, what more could you have? You, you tell me, isn't he a great guy? Well, I was going to say, Jonathan, <laughs> that my name's going to be on these pictures, but I got Simon's name, That's okay? It. Because he really gets half the credit for these, right? I mean, I would not have been here, well, if it's not for you and sure, Angie, sure. and for Simon. Yeah, because the key to great photography is it's not just being able to press the button. No. It's being in the right place. And you, you know, I know you know Africa, but you don't know the Mara like Simon. He goes out every day. So when he sees those lions, he not only knows them, he's going to get the car in the right place. He'll avoid the other cars. And of course, what is photography? It's about great light. And, and great luck. Yeah. And Simon said that we have the lucky vehicle. Okay, but you know what? <laughs> I think you make your luck. Well, don't, you, you, don't you reckon? Look, you planned. You wrote yeah. to us. You said, right. let's get together. We met in Antarctica. Yeah. You knew we lived in Africa. We said, okay, let's get two cars. Us, Angie and me in our car, you in our other car with Simon. You can't go wrong. When I first came here, I used to think that there was something special about the guy's eyes. Right. I thought, these guys must have, you know, x-ray vision. But actually, they don't. They have great eyes. But what it's really about is they know what they're looking for. They know what they're looking for. And it's amazing. Like, we saw these cubs, right? Mm -hmm. And right after we saw these cubs here, we oh. see this line, this lioness. <laughs> sure. And what was going on here, these two buffalo were chasing her. But she's got a wildebeest. She's got a wildebeest. So it wasn't but, about that. But the buffaloes were chasing okay. her away. And she wouldn't have wanted to leave it because right. it's her kill. Exactly. There could be hyenas, there could be vultures, hy you know. So she's going to be very protective of that kill. But you know, I love this shot because it captures the sense of the place. So often photographers, they want to get in for the, the tight shot. You can do it at the zoo, right. you know, seriously. <laughs> right. But what you can't do at the zoo is have the Maasai Mara as your backdrop. Right. Well, you could. You're clever with Photoshop. Well, what, what I say <laughs> is, well, a couple of things about this photograph. I like separation in my pictures. Mm -hmm. So the tree on the left is separated from the tree on the left in the background yep. and the tree yep. here. Yep. And the lioness is separated and the dead wildebeest and the log. So separation is important. But, you know, we were talking about that it's hard to be a still photographer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can still tell the story as a still photographer if we take, like, the wide angle shots okay. and they go in for yep. the tight and shot. And you can see by the look of her, she's not looking too happy. She's got her tail up. She's upset about something. Was it the buffalo? Was it a vulture? Was a car too close? I can just see by the look of her, she's looking a little bit stroppy. 
Uh, I would say, uh, we, we don't use that word in the United States. Okay. But, so what is exactly the stuff? Stroppy. means a bit aggressive. A bit aggressive. Yeah, sort of Mike Tyson on a rampage. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the first two shots I got. Oh, I love that. So, so we first go, thing in the morning. You and, and again, look, you know, great light. Yeah, and, and the fact is you got it right. Don't lie in bed in Africa. Be up before it's light yeah. because as a photographer, you want to be where you want to be before the sun comes up. You get a great shot like that. I would be running around like a headless looking. Uh, uh, I'd be I'd be running around like a headless chicken looking for something as a silhouette to put in it as well. That's yes. icing on the cake. You can't always get it. Great opening shot. Well, or it's a great opening shot. And I, like you said, I like I like this uh, these trees in the foreground. But as you know, mm -hmm. how many years you work there? Forty. Yeah, since 77. I first came here 74, Four. but lived, lived here for 15 years, 77, and remained in contact. Watch those same lines. Right. I know those three cups. You those do? Are, those are marshlands, believe me. And That's we're, impressive. We're in marshland territory here at Governor's Camp. This is actually their territory. So at night, when they're most confident and when their vision gives them a, a sort of, you know, a standing start, they prowl around here. So watch out. Wow. <laughs> but the thing about the light is it changed so quickly. I took this next shot just a, mm. maybe 10 minutes after, yep. and then the clouds yep. came yep. in. Yeah, but so I love this little bit of light where it hits down the bottom. You know, Susan likes that too. Yeah, no, that, that. Well, you see, because otherwise you'd have thought to yourself, mm, could I get down lower? Right. You know, to put that up. Hang on a minute. Even in the Mara, you've got mobile phones going, so I'm just going to. Someone probably I'm spotted just, a good yeah, cat. I'm just, I'm just going to kill that one. See, long. this is what happens when you're world famous. <laughs> <laughs> you never so, know who, but it might be the tax man. So anyway, is this a vulture up here? Or what? Yeah. So we got oh, a... No, that, is it difficult to tell? Can you zoom in on that? I'm not on keynote Okay, yet. but I mean, you know, there's more vultures than there are other birds of prey right. here. So if I had to take a chance, I'd say yes. But you know what I'm noticing about your pictures? And obviously you're a pro, but a little tip for people, and you raised it already which is separation. Right. Now, what we mean by that is, is that the person looking through the viewfinder has got to be very disciplined to look every bit. You know, is my horizon straight? Am I checking that this tree is overlapping that tree? If I've got six Maasai in my picture, is one of them overlapping with the other? You know, is there something which destroys the beauty and the harmony of the shapes? Mm. And that's what you're saying there. You know, your trees are nicely lined up. Your lines are nicely lined up. Bingo. And we see the world in three dimensions, or camera see two, so that's why that separation is important. Mm -hmm. So we go back the next day, we yep. get up early before okay. the sunrise, yep. like you say. So here I'm telling the story with the wide angle mm -hmm. shot. And you love that tree. Or was it just that was where the kill that, was? That's where the kill was, <laughs> but I do love the tree, and this yeah. is the shot oh, we wow, got. Beautiful. And this you see, now this I like. You've just brought in a little bit of the tree. Because right. some people might have said, uh oh. You know what's that doing there but actually it gives an extra dimension and a sense of depth i love it and i love this sort of shape of it and then so now this is the marsh pride you these are actually four younger generation lionesses who are staking a claim to the area they were born they don't want to leave they're under pressure really? from the older lions yeah from their mothers and their aunts and their cousins and their, their great aunts and their grannies but because they've got cubs they are fiercely trying to hang on to this Wow. Yeah, so they've, anyway, they're, they're, they've got food, the cubs are big enough to be able to feed on it. And that, what's interesting is, I said these cubs are around three months, the smaller ones. A lioness will keep her cubs hidden for the first couple of months. By the time they're two months old, eight weeks to ten weeks, she starts to bring them to where the rest of the pride are. By that time, they know her voice, they know who mum is, they know that if she calls to go to her if there's danger, and they're big enough to actually come to what could be a potentially dangerous situation like this. Look how small they are. Right. But they've got three or two big minders who are there if the hyenas appear or other lions, they've got some muscle to back them up. See, this is why I love hanging out with this guy. He knows so much. <laughs> you notice all my, most of my pictures are cropped. You know, one of yeah, my things, yeah, when, no, I, I love it. when I send a picture to a book publisher, I say, crop my pictures and you're a dead no, man. No, 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 With a oh, little a happy killer. face. Yeah, yeah exactly. But you exactly. know what I'm saying. So anyway. Yes, you see, and you've gone from a nice long vertical, a panoramic, and I mean, this is fantastic. It all works. The contrast between the muddy cub and the mother's face, and what, do, you know, do you know what really gives it is that pink tongue. Yeah, because, pink it, nice. you know, obviously the light was a bit sort of low. It's not, there's not a lot of light there, but that tongue, I mean, it's perfect. The face of the mum is framed by the paw, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of gem. You say to me, but come on, you know, is this BS? Do you really know these lines? How do you identify them? <laughs> I think it's a spot on their face. Okay, you got it, bingo. 
See the spots on the face? So this is how I know this is one of those younger generation ones. Well, this yeah. is how I know that. I was watching oh, Big Cat Diaries you Big Cat. and you were, draw you were drawing them, right? Exactly. See? Yeah, I and I can even tell you this guy's there. That little guy, he's a little guy. Oh, he's, he's <laughs> yeah, a, a little, few little he's details little around his backside. You know, one Again, the, beautiful, vertical. You one, know? one of the tips I give people, Jonathan, mm -hmm. is when you think you're close, get closer. So exactly, yeah. I like this, but yeah. getting a little closer yeah. tells, tells more of a yeah. story. Another little bit of trivia. In case anybody asks you the you know big cat quiz, you don't want to try and actually age the female. Yeah. Well, now if she had a mouth open, you'd check her teeth for wear and how you know how much of her teeth have, or right. her teeth have been worn down. But if I check the color of her nose, a pink nose generally means you're under four years old, wow. and she is a first-time mother and she's four years old. So by the time she's five, she'll have some little black spots on that nose, and by the time she's ten, if she lives that long, the nose will be almost completely black. Wow. Yep. You know so much. This is so awesome. So now, these, these are slightly bigger cubs. These are slightly ones. bigger yeah, yeah, cubs. Yeah. So you're but going sort of, you know, four or five months. And this one, this one's about nine. Nine about months, nine. ten months. Yeah. I like the light in their eyes. Yeah, and they're beautiful. And it looks like a little male. See how he's developing a little bit of a mane at the edge of his thing? Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it's... I think even when somebody doesn't understand photography, when they're still maybe, you know, taking pictures with their iPhone right. or their, you know, smartphone, which is great, um, and they haven't upgraded to sort of bigger cameras. I think intuitively we understand composition and we know if you showed people, somebody three shots and one of these, the, one of the cubs head was turned the other right. way away from you, they'd say, okay, no, not that one. It's this one. Right. There's that sense they of know. harmony and composition and abstract that really works. Awesome. Okay, so let's keep going. So in the afternoon, Simon said, let's go to the, see the, the, yeah. uh, we're, the we're wildebeest going, migration. We're going for the wildebeest migration. Okay. So I took some shots of the zebras. Oh, wonderful. But we get Look there, and you know you have to wait. You yeah, have to wait, yeah, and you yeah, wait, yeah. and you wait. Tell well, me. Tell we me only had it. to wait a few minutes Whoa, until look we got that. this. Fantastic. And, this and what's lovely is you've got the progression. You've got the progression from nothing happening to, and then this swirl, this S shape. The S curve is in there. Love well, it. This is this was kind of luck. So we see this. Well, I don't think it was luck. You were there <laughs> and you took the shot. You know, somebody else would have been bungling, fiddling around, deciding, oh, am I going to use this lens or that right. lens? You knew intuitively. You have to visualize. Yeah. So anyway, we get this shot, mm -hmm. and then you know they start to cross. Mm -hmm. They started to come back. Okay. Right. So they're going yeah. one way here. Because sometimes a cow or calf will get left behind. You know, a little calf right. will get left behind. It'll bleat. The mother will come back, and you get this backwards, forwards, or somebody occasionally gets taken. Well, that's exactly what, what I happened. mean by taken. Yeah. <laughs> you definitely got taken. So this guy's coming across mm -hmm. here. A big gin trap. Well, look at this about oh taken. Here gosh, you, you have two of them. the croc coming up this way and the other croc yeah, coming up. So yeah, they're having a yeah. nice lunch. Don't put your foot in the water. You definitely <laughs> Seriously. Don't, don't want to put your foot <laughs> in the water. It's not a question of can I drink the water? <laughs> can I put my toes in? <laughs> definitely don't, not. Don't put your... <laughs> Don't put your toes in. So anyway, we got this shot. And this is all, this is 24 hours? 24 well, hours. it has to be. We've only just got here. You only You've got only here. Be, I know when you left our house. <laughs> yeah. This Tw is true. 24 hours. Excellent. The Mara always delivers. That's why we filmed Big Cat Diary yeah. here. You and know? I, and I think Governor's Camp delivers too. I mean, oh. we're so close to all. We're like, you know, just a You're few minutes away. You're at the heart of the Marsh Pride Territory for a start. So you're quids in on lands, although you'll find lands all over the Mara. You're very close to the crossing sites, the places the wildebeest and zebra return to every year yeah. when they cross. And you've got leopards and cheetahs here as well. What else do you want? Elephants, buffalo, you got that too. We, we got yep. that too. So anyway, we're down at one end and we see all this yeah. dust and Simon, our yeah, excellent yeah, yeah. guy, yeah. says, let's go, back. Yeah. So let's go back. So let's go back. So we go back, we get there just yeah. in time. The wildebeest, they start <laughs> charging right at us with yeah, the dust. Yeah, because they get spooked. They get spooked because they're coming yeah. back well, now. Well, so you think about it. You go down into a cul-de-sac. It's like yeah. going down a dark alley right. when you're unarmed. Well, you go down a dark alley or a tricky cul-de-sac, which this is, yeah. you can get hemmed in. And if there are lions there, which there often are, the slightest thought or the slightest twitch from the wildebeest next right. to you, you're out of there big time. And if one goes, these are herd animals. Yeah. The Great Migration, doesn't that say it? No, this is amazing. And this is shot with a 24 to 105. Oh my God, I mean, they this, must have been coming right they, past they the were, car. They, they were coming like right out. And, here and here's our, here's our, this. Here, here's you, our guide, yeah, Simon. Yeah, and you know what I love? So many times people say to me, you know, but what about the other cars? I right. say, look, if you're so caught up with the other cars that you're not watching what the lions are doing, you know, just forget it. Concentrate on what you're trying to do. But yeah. secondly, put the cars in the picture. It, it, it tells makes, a story. With story we're people. Tellers. And not only that, you know, this is a human story as well as a wildlife right. story. 
And so this delivers. This definitely uh, helps to tell so the fun. story. Ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. Absolutely. And this is a tour. Oh, that's the, the killer. That's to the to end it. We got a nice. Well, actually, I have one more no, because no, like, like once that. again, like the light yeah, changed the so quickly in the morning, we had this big storm. So what do you think? How did I do the first I twenty-four think, hours? I the guy Rick, from New York. Rick, I think you did <laughs> exactly as I thought you would. The Mara delivered as I thought it would. Governor's Camp is a great location. Yep. We have a little stone cottage here. I'll I show that. it to you later. I want to see uh, it. So we keep our car here with all our goodies, and that means we can sort of use these. But brilliant job. So thumbs up to Canon, thumbs well, up to you, thumbs up to Governor's yeah. Camp, Masai Mara, and your guide, Simon. Well, listen, everything's been great, and it's such an honor to work with you. If you could give you know, the viewers <laughs> one piece of advice for going on safari, what would it be? I think two things. One, you know, when you pick up an itinerary for a safari, you're going to have lots of options. People will probably try and sell you five or six destinations on your trip. Forget it. Pick somewhere like the Mara and maybe one other location, maybe three, and make sure that you don't actually literally unpack your bags and then the next day you're out again. So minimum stay three days in somewhere like the Mara. Don't try and do too much because believe me, you're going to come back again. Excellent. Thank you so much, my friend. It's good. Excellent. We love you. Super. You too. I'm not going to walk out. <laughs> <laughs>